The internet, as we know it, is dead. So there's a very popular talking point theory called the dead internet theory. And the idea is simple, the concept misapplied, so let me explain it to you. So the common idea is that the internet is dead because it's basically just full of AI bots, AI websites and algorithms that all interact with each other and the people you interact with are not real. As a consumer and a user, someone who has hundreds of thousands of followers across different platforms, I can tell you this right now that a lot of people who follow me are real. I don't have tons of bots everywhere. But what I mean by the internet being dead and the death by algorithm has to do with the following. Let's just go back in time and think about the start of social media. In the very beginning, social media, the algorithm was simple. You make something, people like something, more people see that something. So this naturally favors people with an existing fan base and then amplifies that fan base to an extreme. So I first have some social media page. The Kardashians are super famous. I naturally want to follow the Kardashians or pick whomever your favorite social media light is. I follow them, they make a post, I like their post. It makes me feel connected with them. It gives me insights into their life. Cool. I like their post, me and millions of other people like their post. And then people who don't follow the Kardashians get to see the Kardashians post on the explore page because it's a really popular post. People see that post, they like it, they go follow them. Next thing you know, they make another post, more people see that post, so on and so forth. So it snowballs, right? All of a sudden, <laughs> the algorithm is taken over by the Kardashians or whomever. So the algorithm had to go, okay, well, how do we give people who aren't the Kardashians an opportunity to still grow? Because otherwise it would just accentuate and emphasize those who are already popular. And it says, let's do this ebb and flow model. Kardashians will give you the popularity that you want, but every now and then we won't expose you to all your followers and we'll expose your followers to new people. So think about it like a wave function. Some days it peaks and some days it troughs, so on and so forth. But ideally still growing the interest of, you know, or the growing the following of the Kardashians, but just not at a linear rate at a, you know, cresting and trough kind of rate, which gives during that trough period, the dip, other people an opportunity to get exposure. Wonderful. Now, what happens is over time, more and more people follow more and more people. You see people, you like people. Eventually you might follow a thousand people, a hundred, you don't follow a hundred thousand people, a thousand people, 1500 people, maybe only 300 people, more than 50. So as a consumer, I start to follow, as I drop my phone, tons of people, right? Okay, I follow tons of people. So then if all those people post in a day because they want me to like their post or they want to connect with me, how does the algorithm even know what to show me? Do I show it chronologically? Oh, if the Kardashians had posted most recently, do I show them? Or if my favorite baseball player had posted, do I show them? Right, so it has a quandary to, to deal with. <laughs> and it goes, okay, well, uh, you follow all these people. I can't show you everybody, so I'll show you some. And if you interact with those people, I'll show it to you again. Now what happens is because you interact with that person, and you see their post and you interact with it, it'll show you their post again. So now there's pressure on the very next post to be dynamic as well. For example, if you like someone's post and it shows you three more posts of their stuff, but you don't interact with it, it go, okay, well, one in four that person liked, let me downregulate it. So that's part of it. That's like one feature. The second feature in this regard is that the time constraints got pressurized no longer did people want to sit down and read because if you sit down and read a blog, you can't see as many people. So the algorithm goes, okay, well, we want to increase the number of profiles you see and the people you interact with because that helps profiles stay engaged on the platform. We want our producers, the people who make content to be engaged with people. So we're going to kind of make things a little bit shorter and quicker here. We're going to emphasize video, short text, lack of detail. 
So what might have made someone popular was the depth and knowledge and the breadth of interest that they had that you can follow. No longer is the depth of a narrative there, but merely what is the flash in the pan content. And this is where the death of the internet as we know it becomes. Because the original internet was very segmented community based. You'd have forums, you'd have platforms, people who were interested in certain things would gather around certain areas and they'd engage with it. For example, when I first started the Instagrams, tons of people who were strength coaches followed me and they'd talk and communicate and have discussions and it was like a living forum on my page. All right, it'd be like, okay, people want to know more. They're gonna hop on my page, not just for me, but for the dynamic interactions of the commenters. But that's gone though, because no longer are people commenting in depth conversational topics in the comment threads. It's normally witty one-liners in an attempt to get likes and followers or something mean or supportive, just narrow. Support, mean, witty comment. Very, very rarely is it a discussion, which is what kind of the algorithm wants because then you don't get stuck on that page, you just move on to the next. So now time has been constrained. The information has been shrunk. We have to deliver it quickly. What does this allow? This allows copycatting. So no longer do you have to have the detail knowledge of something. No longer do you have to have the caveats and the what ifs and the maybes, but you have to be adamant or you can be adamant and quick. And so what's the best exercise? How do I do this? And it has to be informative, but somewhat decisive. And what this creates is a huge area where people can pair it, they can replicate, not necessarily duplicate, but mimic, and then saturate the system. So there was a recent, I don't know, two years ago, where it'd be like, do these three exercises to get athletic, right? It would show you three exercises. And that was a granularity or a ma magnification would be the right word, a shrinkage of the original. I think these three exercises are important. Here's the muscle tendon unit dynamic interactions. And here's my take on it. Here's some pros and cons. And then someone goes, well, here are the three best exercises. Right? Which one's gonna engage the audience better? The latter of the two. Okay. So we've kind of got to this point now, we've shrunk the original idea. But now we've gotten past that, right? We say three best exercises, that doesn't really work because it's become saturated. Now we have to have even uh, more granular and more isolated topics, no longer communal based. You have to have a little bit higher quality content than the three best exercises, but you also have to have um, an enclosed story essentially. So you have to have here are what happened, here's a trouble you might have. You have trouble with low back pain. Here are some three exercises to resolve it. Maybe here's some catchy imagery. Someone like Squat University does this really well, where he has a very complete narrative in his topic. Or the secondary aspect of it is you make something purely for the <laughs> interest of the viewer. Chaos, funny, random, unique, arbitrary, non-connected, non-communal. What naturally occurs in this situation is no longer is it about the creator or the influencer's story, which you might find interesting. No longer is it about a narrative. I remember back in the day, you'd have like part one of this, part two of this post, part three of this post. But now it's about the content, regardless of the provider. And because of that, it forces the content producer to almost not lose their way, it's not the right way to put it, but make content non-identifiable with them, which removes the idea of authority, of interest, of community, of following, of network, and simply takes this lump that is the post, and it says, these are the three best exercise posts, Let's categorize this in the universe of exercise posts. Let's see how it does and see what transpires. But no longer is it like this is the post that Max Schmarzo made or this is the post that name your favorite influencer made. This is just a post 
that has some content on it that goes into the universe of other posts with content on it. And those who engage with those posts might see that post, they might like the post, but they never actually have the source of that post being emphasized. It's never the author that is necessarily emphasized. The content is emphasized. And this is where the projection of content removed from creator becomes a big, I don't wanna call it chasm, but a potential chasm in the world of content creators. Because you wanna create something, you wanna make something, but you're not making it for the sake of making it. You make it because you wanna tell your story. A lot of people who make content, I know myself, I like to do something and then document that something. I don't like to make content. I like to document my existence and what I do and share some interests and insights along the way that can hopefully provide detail to what I do and then you can use it to make yourself better or whatever. But now the shift has purely become content, 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 with the emphasis being uniquely placed on each individual post. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have people who do that better than said authorities or said content creators who pick off the content from those original sources and then think of it like this, I'll take a step back. I have a content creator, let's say Andrew Huberman, very popular, very detailed. Someone <clears throat> might find a way to summarize his narratives quicker, more effectively, take his information, leverage it, not copy it, but leverage it, because it's scientific knowledge, right? But leverage it, then share it, then benefit from that, be forced to constantly do this because they themselves are not creating any unique content, they are just making Andrew Huberman based content. So they're forced to kind of continue down this path of content emphasis, not documentation or learning emphasis. Huberman might get frustrated and be like, oh my gosh, my viewership has gone down, this has gone down. It might push away some creators. So that's one chasm. The other chasm that it might occur in the next four years is that some level of artificial intelligence will be better at parroting our own content than us. It can create snazzy looking images, it can create cool narratives that go along with the information, images, pictures, stills, whatever it might be. Infographics, and go from there. I remember just saying infographics. Remember that? That was a time period. People really liked infographics on and it's social media, and that was a big thing. That seemed to have fallen by the wayside. But if it does come back to light, because they are high in effort to make, an AI can expedite that and do it itself in a bot form, or a community of bots that aggregate this information, then you'd eventually lose the grasp of content creation. You'll never be able to replicate necessarily the in-person documentation, but it's definitely going to become highly competitive in the creation aspect, because you could almost, because <coughs> scaling on AI almost becomes infinite. Not fully infinite, but Consum, consum, uh, consumer infinite, right? You can only consume so much, so it might hit whatever limit a consumer can reach. And it starts to dominate these verses of three best exercises, or best way to train this, or best way to train that. Or it might be even better at scraping the internet for viral or potential viral clips and going from there. It'll be very interesting to see. I've noticed that the community of social media has really fallen by the wayside. In order to build community, you almost need to be divisive, but that a divisive community is very fleeting. Only when the aggregate whole agrees with your divisiveness can you maintain it. But as you become divisive, you also push people away. And if you ever wanna live the non-confrontational life of something, then being divisive probably isn't something you can sustain. And eventually if you get out of being divisive, you'll lose that content consumer base. So is the internet dead? Oh man, I don't know. Is it heading that way in the next three, four years possibly? Is it, could it simply be resolved by a new social media app or platform? I think so, I think TikTok had shown that there was massive interest in new, um, is landscaping the right word, new real estate on social media. And it's almost like it needs to have this 
collapse and expansion, collapse and expansion pattern in order to not become or reach some sort of singularity of AI-ness. <laughs> like the Facebook eventually collapsed and Instagram expanded and then Vine collapsed and TikTok expanded and YouTube Shorts have expanded. YouTube's interesting because it's kind of stuck to its nature. Um, Instagram itself kind of expands and contracts by introducing new features, new ideas and concepts. We'll see. Um, it's definitely heading in a path that's not very content creator friendly. I think when I speak for the whole of content creators, at least the majority of content creators, it is more frustrating than fun. It forces you to be far more conscious about the things you don't really want to do. You can't just make a post about you and have it be useful information. You have to make it about you that's useful information in a high quality way with a certain intro and all this other stuff because you're feeding the content existence the machine in of itself. I don't know. Internet, possibly dead. Internet has changed. Um, I'll post this on the YouTubes and my podcast. I'll put a link down below to a good dead internet theory that I very much enjoyed. Some of them aren't very good. Some people talk about them and they don't necessarily have the same grasp I feel that some others do. But this one's interesting. I'll put it down below. Thanks for sticking around, guys. I'm glad you could have this fun little uh, discussion with me. Like, subscribe, share, because as always, I too exist within the interwebs <laughs> and the content creatorship. Take care.